The Younger Dryas impact hypothesis is the idea that during the Younger Dryas, a period of cooling about 12.9 thousand years ago during what was otherwise a warming period of the ice ages, that that cooling was caused by an impact from space, similar to the impact that killed off the non-avian dinosaurs but on a smaller scale. And at least some of the time, this idea has caught on, despite it lacking any really single concrete paper that lines out all the evidence. And so that's kind of what this paper did. It looked at the evidence, or in most of these cases, the lack thereof, at least as far as the impact is going. We still have really good climate data for this period because of glacial cores that tell us at least some proxies for the Earth's temperature. So we can tell there was just this sudden cooling. However, again, not really evidence for an impact based on everything else that this paper finds. So first, let's look at exactly what the authors suggest should be seen if there was an impact at the Younger Dryas. First off, you would expect global cooling all at once all around the world at the same time. It wouldn't be offset by a few thousand years in different places, it would be consistent because this impact would throw a lot of material up into the atmosphere and that would help block out the sun, thus causing the cooling. We really don't find that. The impact hypothesis also suggests that this cooling is also what changed the Clovis Paleo Indians culture, because we, before it at least according to the hypothesis, have Clovis Indian tool sets. So that's things like the atlatl and Clovis spearheads. This happens at the same time as the massive die offs of things like mammoths, giant ground sloths, and other megafauna around most of the world. And all of this would then coincide with a massive spike in charcoal around 12.9 thousand years ago, which would suggest at least in North America that the impact happened and the entire continent was all on fire because of this giant air burst of hot gases that just lit everything on fire. At least that's what the hypothesis says. And the thing is, there's at least a few points that are pretty obvious arguments against it. The first one is the most obvious. There's no crater anywhere that would be large enough and date to the right time. And potentially it could have just been lost somehow. There was even a crater found under a Greenland glacier not that many years ago, and it was at least 12.9 thousand years old. However, subsequent dating has suggested it's many millions of years older than that. So not really useful for this example. Potentially also it could have just landed very near a subduction zone with the plate tectonics moving into one another and then those tectonic forces destroying the crater later on, or potentially a separate glacier, depending on where it landed, came through and destroyed the evidence of this crater. But at the same time, you can look at things like Behringer Crater, or sometimes called Meteor Crater in Northern Arizona, which is 50,000 years old, so even older, and from a much smaller impact, meaning that hypothetically there should be a much larger, more significant crater somewhere around that time period if there was actually an impact at 12.9 thousand years ago. So that's really not looking good for this idea. Now again, the crater could have been destroyed, but we're also missing other parts of that evidence. For example, 66 million years ago, when the dinosaurs were killed off by an impact from space, there's also an iridium layer. Iridium is really, really rare in Earth's crust, but it's pretty common in meteorites. So it's good evidence that, hey, a big rock from space hit the planet and deposited that iridium all over the world. We do not see anything consistent with iridium or similar metals that would be indicative of something like an impact at 12.9 thousand years ago. As for some of the other evidence, you can look at the Clovis people, which according to the hypothesis disappeared all at once right about 12.9 to 12.8 thousand years ago. That's not really that important though, because when you look at other human cultures and the different toolkits they developed and how they changed or disappeared from the archeological record, the Clovis people are pretty consistent with everything else that's disappeared. It's not some unique case. And oftentimes some of those occurrences are still a bit later than immediately after the hypothetical impact. You can also look at things like the charcoal, which the global charcoal database did go, hey, there is kind of a peak between 13,000 and 11,000 years ago. However, that's still a much larger time span and some other research with different statistical methods has gone, yeah, it's not really that much of an anomaly. It's more just due to what rocks are exposed that we're able to find some of that charcoal. It's not exactly significant. In fact, one of these studies using other methods actually found an increase in charcoal just before this hypothetical impact at about 13.5 thousand years ago. 
And this would have been during that warming period where the glaciers would have been receding, meaning grasslands could expand, and then by extension, those grasslands could burn. So it goes much more in line with what we would expect based on the exact evidence and what the climate would have been. Speaking of climate, Florida also got warmer during this period. So it's not like it's super consistent across the entire planet. There is variation depending on where you go. Something else that we wouldn't expect to see if it was an impact where the sun was blotted out everywhere. It's just not realistic to try and say that, hey, this was all caused by an impact. So yeah, with the evidence presented, it's really not that likely that an impact was the cause of the younger driest cooling. Instead, it seems like there was potentially a number of different factors that may have contributed to it. There could have been something happening with the glaciers that actually changed ocean currents and then suddenly essentially reversed that warming. That's very possible. Additionally, you have things like those grassland expansions, which could change the climate by changing the atmosphere, producing more oxygen and less CO2. And finally, there have been some looks at some different lake sediments, which do suggest potentially there were at least some volcanoes, because what the elements that they're finding in those lake sediments suggest is there may have been some widespread ash fields depositing some heavy metals, not the kind found in meteorites, across large parts of the landscape. And so potentially those volcanoes could have cooled down the planet at least some. They probably would have needed to be fairly sustained as opposed to just like what they are today where it's here's one volcano every now and then, but it is still a great example of one of the many potential causes of the younger driest cooling that aren't linked to an impact and have some better evidence to support them.